Today we're going to speak about a Eruv with the spe special circumstances, such as Eruv that a person leave at the uh, top of a tower. For example, if a person made an Eruv and then he locked it up and he lost the key. For example, Eruv that was put in a pit, Eruv is way too high, etc. All kind of rare the circumstance and how we deal with that Eru. But before we go to our Sugiya, just a word in a special day today. Today I would like to dedicate the study first and foremost to a special Yolzeit, Rabbi Chaim and Rabbi Yosef Vital. He was a great Kabbalist, student of the Arizal, and one of his beautiful teaching is the secret, the esoteric part of teaching the Torah. And Rabbi Chaim Mital tells us that Iyar, the month of Iyar, it's abbreviation of Aleph, it's Ani, Yud and Yud is the name of Hashem, and Resh is Rof Echa, meaning is a sentence in the Torah, in the book of Shmo that tells us, I am your Lord, your God, who heal you. This is a special month, he said, that we can pray for healing, healing as individual, collective healing and a world healing. So let's pray together that this month of Iyar bring upon us and the whole world a time of peace and healing. Amen. Amen. We are page 34, three lines from the bottom. Let's wrap up what we studied yesterday because at the end of the session yesterday we were a little bit in a rush. Magen Abraham, the great rabbi <coughs> and commentator explained to us it was a discussion of Ben Hashmashot, what happened if it's a twilight before Shabbat. And he explained that in this type of situation when a person is in the in between, we have an issue. And we explain just an abbreviation of what we discussed yesterday that we differentiate between a festival that occurred on Friday versus a festival that occurred on Sunday. If it's occurred on Friday, the Magen Avam tells us it's a very different story because if it's occurred on of, of Friday, it's in a domain that you're not sure if the Shabbat is there or not. And therefore, we don't add lo mosif gzera de Rabbanan. We don't add another uh, rabbinical de the rabbinic decree. If it happens on Motzei Shabbat, on Saturday night, now we're talking in a different situation. Now we are already in a domain on Shabbat, and since we're getting out of Shabbat, but we're not sure if it's still Shabbat or not, then we have an issue, because um, if it's Shabbat, we cannot carry. So again, the Magen Avram tells us that if it's Yom Tov Le Shabbat, then you can carry. But if it's a, um, a, uh, the opposite way, uh, then is the issue to carry. Um, the Tosfor tells us, and that's also part of the foundation of Magen Avram, he said that when you have a situation of a tree, remember we said Ilan, the tree himself, we're putting the, the um, basket on the tree. So he said that the, the decree not apply to um, the twilight time. So again, Yom Tov to Shabbat, it's a relatively easy situation. Shabbat to Yom Tov, that's in the final halacha an issue. With that in mind, now we go the opposite way. Remember we talked earlier in the introduction and yesterday about a, a guda, about a situation that you have on the top of the Eruv and on the bottom of the Eruv. So, and we explain that when it's a private domain, you are the owner not only on the property, but by the halachic legal status, you are the owner of that domain up to the very bottom and up to the heaven. In other words, unlike Reshut Arabim, a public domain that we are limited to you, in a Reshut Ayachid you can go anywhere. With that in mind, now we go the opposite direction. What happens if a person put the Eruv in a pit? Then 
pet basically is a private domain. Netano bebo afilu amok mea ama. That's a quotation from the Mishnah, three lines from the bottom of page 34. The Mishnah said, Eruvo Eruv. It's considering an, a proper Eruv since, again, it's Rishut Ayachid. Hi, boy, de kai heicha. What do you have to say in that um, uh, pit? What's involved? Ilei madekai birshut ayachid. If you tell me that that's, that pit, its domain, its uh, um, uh, existence, in solely and only in a private domain, and the owner of the Eruv intent to have his residence, it's called liknot shvita, to stay in a private domain, 34b pshita. This is obvious. Why? Rishut ayachid ad larakia. Private domain ascend to the heaven, to the sky. Veheicha de salka leel hachename de nachta letachat. The same way that it go up to the sky, it also go deep down and therefore there is no difference between pit that have a size of tefach or have it a uh, 100 cubit down and therefore what's the big deal why the Mishnah need to tell us that for sure Kana Eruvo that he, he has the, the Eruv you have to say that he put the Eruv where? In a pit which is located in public domain. Now, where exactly he planning the owner of the Eruv to dwell during the Shabbat? If you meant to say at the top of the Eruv, who be makom echad ve'eruvo be makom acher hu? He is located in one location, which is lemala reshut harabim in a public domain, and lemata below is a private domain. So, if it was in a and a um, two different domain, for sure it's not an eruv. Why? Because even in the twilight time, you cannot transfer from private to public domain. Why? Because it's a biblical prohibition. The ilemata, if it's a pit, for all kind of reasons, and he intend to dwell in the pit, pshita, for sure. It's considering an Eruv, who the Eruvo, the Makom Echad. The owner and the Eruv are in one location. So again, for those who just walk in, in abbreviation, what did we ask? We said that if the owner of the Eruv and the Eruv himself are both in private domain, it's not even a question. If he is up there, which is a public domain, and the Eruv is downstairs in a pit, so even in Ben Hashmashot, in a twilight, he cannot transfer it from one domain to another because it's a biblical prohibition. So what do you have to say? Which means that the, the pit is in a field that doesn't have any partitions, which means it's a, it's, for example, it's in a valley, because it's a four by four. Now, venit kaven lishbot lemala, which means he intend to dwell up, and you have this little valley. So it means that he dwell in private domain. I'm sorry, the, the Eruv is in a private domain, and he dwell in a Carmelite. Verebihi. And that's go by the opinion of Rebbe de Amar. כל דבר שהוא משום שבות לא גזרו עליו בין השמשות. According to the Rebbe, 
anything that it's only rabbinic, shvut the rabbanan, that it's only rabbinic prohibition. So that decree then is not applied to the time of the twilight. Just remember that that's Rebbe's opinion, not the sages who disagree. Sages say that even rabbinic prohibition apply also to the twilight time because they hold that you cannot carry from the pit to the Carmelite even in the twilight time and therefore he and his Eruv is not in one domain. Now we go to the Mishnah. Special circumstance. Netano, one place, the Eruv Berosh Hakane or Berosh Hakundas. He placed the Eruv at the top of a reed on the top of the pole Bisman shehu talush venauts if the the reed or pole is detached from the original place afilu gavoa me'ama arezeru so even it is 100 cubit high he is considering a valid eru so a person cannot remove the reed or pole from the ground and take his Eruv. Rashi. Ho'il ve'norachav lemata. Because they don't have the, the, the weed down for. Lav reshut ha'yachid It's not considering a private domain. Ve'af al gav de'lemala arba'a. Even a high there, there are four. Now the Gemara elaborates on that. Rami Lei Rav Ada Bar Matna Le Rava. He asked, he has an issue, a contradiction. Since we said in the Mishnah that if a, place, a person placed an Eruv on the top of a reed or a pole, so it means Talush Venauts. It has to be a situation that the reed was detached, which means it's not attached to the ground. Ain, so it means that it's an Eruv. Lo talush venaus, if it's not yet attached to the ground, lo, the Eruv is not considering an Eruv. Why? Because you cannot pull out the Eruv from something that is attached to the ground even in a twilight time. Do you remember that the sages said, we studied it several times, that if you have something on a tree, so the sages not allow you to go ahead and pull out because the fear is that you're going to break some of the branches. Remember we said it? It was in the um, um, 32. We studied it in 32b. So he said, money. Who is the, the, the Tana in the Mishnah that forbids it, forbids between in the timeline, twilight? Rabbanani, the Amrei. This is the sages that disagree with Rabbi that said, Kol davar shehu mishum shvud gazru alav ben hashmashot. Anything that it's a rabbinic prohibition applies also to the time of the twilight. So the, again, the prohibition against using the tree is rabbinic. But... The, the rabbi said that you cannot use it even at the time of the twilight because you cannot take it and eat it and therefore it's not considering an eru. Veha amart reisha rabbi reisha rabbi vesepa rabbanan how you tell me in a quotation of Brita that one part go in one direction another part go another direction one go by the rabbi and the second clause of the Brita is, is the sages. So Rabbi said, Amar lei, Kvarami lei, Rami barcham al Rav Chizda. That question already asked. Said where? Veshanela, and Rav Chizda explained to him, Reisha Rabbi veSefer Rabbanan. Usually Mishnah not go that direction. But here, it has to be that way. That Rabbi is holding one part, and the end is according to the sages. So, up to this point, we have this concern that uh, this tree is basically attached to the ground. Ravina, Ravina explained it differently and he said, Kula Rabihi, 
the entire Mishnah go by the Rebbe. The Seifa, the second clause in the Mishnah that say that it's attached to a reed or a pole, and it's not considering an Eruv, it's because Gzeira, there is a special rabbinic decree, Shema Yiktom. So Tosfot explains that, again, you have a tree, and it's a Isu that's called Tolesh. You go on a tree, what happens when you, you climb over a tree? What happens when a person climb over the tree? Usually... Break of leaves, branches. Excellent, break of leaves, branches, very good day. Mm -hmm. So, therefore it's called one of the Melachot, it's called Tolesh. Reaping, yeah. Reaping. Mm -hmm. And Tolesh is the Oraita. It's a biblical. So, therefore, Tosfot said, according to Rabbi, they have this Chashash, there is a Shema Yiktom, so, so maybe he's going to cut part of the reed or the pole, and that's called Melechet Kotzer. And if he does that unwittingly, he needs to bring a sin offering. So even Rabbi hold that you can go up on a tree at the time of the twilight, it applies solely for a tree because we behold the tree is strong so the feel that he is going to rip something it's very far so he hold that that's not applied to a twilight time but if you're uh, 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 speaking about reed he said reed is soft so he said that most probably if he use it he will cut and that considering kotzer is that the sages uh, say that even in the twilight is forbidden. So, therefore, Rebbe in that sense agreed that if he placed the Eruv on the top of the reed or the pole, that it's attached to the ground, the Eruv cannot be valid because you cannot take it at the twilight's time and bring it to a place that you are planning to dwell. Okay? Now is a story. Hahu pol Musa de Ata Lenahardea. It's a group of soldiers. Pol Musa, it's a, it's a group of soldiers that came to Nahardea. It's a large city of learning at that time. And they took quarter in the study hall. So it's not enough room for the students. Amar lehu Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said to his student before Shabbat, Puku avidu kvushei kavshei ba'agama. He said, go to the uh, river, go out and create seats by compressing reeds in the um, um, marshes, and then ulmachar, and tomorrow, which is Shabbat, Nezil the native Ilavayu. We're going to sit on them and we have enough space. So they are one of the two. Either it's an issue of Mukte, of set aside, or it's an issue of Shema Yishaver, that maybe it's going to be broken. Rami Barchama le Rav Nachman, Rami Barchama asked Rav Nachman, Ve'amre la Ravuka Barada le Rav Nachman. Talush venauts ein lo talush velo nauts lo. You tell me that that's applied only the reed was detached and then stuck into the ground. Then you said yes, but if it was not detached and uh, not stuck into the ground, no. So what basically happened is that the reed usually it's part of that decree. The same way as the sages said that you should not use the tree on Shabbat, the same way they put a decree not to use the reed that attached to the ground on Shabbat. So how come you allow the student to take this reed and while they attach and use them for Shabbat? Maybe he's going to cut it. So how come Rav Nachman said that they can sit on that reed, in that river, in that agam, 
even according to a rabbi that is forbidden in the Ben Hashmashot in the twilight. So Rav Nachman responds, Amar lei, Hatam be'uzradin. Uzradin meaning it's, um, we are dealing with hard reeds, which means originally the reeds are soft. But now it's uh, here a reed, so then it's the same category as a regular tree, and it's part of the prohibition of using it on Shabbat. But I allowed my student to see it on these three that are still soft. And therefore, if they're still soft, it's considering as a, in a way, produce or vegetables, but not in a legal category, halachic legal category of a tree. So therefore, if it's a, attached to the ground, some type of vegetable, it's not part of the rabbinic decree. Proof to that, he said, How do you know that we have to differentiate between soft and hard reeds? The Tanya, we learn in the Brayta, Hakanin, Vehaatadin, Vehagigin, it's a different um, um, a throne. Minilanen is some type of tree. Veenan kilaim bekeren. So the Torah said, Loti zraka mecha kilaim. You should not put it in you. Vineyard, a mixture of. of uh, so that's uh, not apply to the vineyard. Uh, it's a. Um, um, and therefore, Vetana ida hakanim vehakidam. And we said in, in another bright, reads. And uh, Kidan, it's a Sesia or something like that, yep. mm -hmm. right? Vehaur uh, Banin, and the Blarshus. He said, Min Yerekem, is some type of herb. Vehen Kilaim Bekeren. And it's considering they are included in the prohibition of food crops in the vineyard. So he said, Kashia Adade. You see in one place that is considering part of the tree, in other one not. El Ashmamina kan be uzradin, kan be sheenan uzradin. You have to say that one is applied to uh, a sov, and the other one, it's, um, it's uh, the reeds that they are, they are trees, that they're already strong. That's the way Rashi understands it. So, Shmamina. Shmamina meaning? That's, um, um, that's the conclusion. One place it's hard, one place speak about soft. So now they ask the Kidam in Yaraku, and Sasya is a type of herb. The Hatnan, we learn in the Mishnah, Tracted Kilaim, chapter 1, Mishnah 8, En Markivin Peigam. We, we learn that one may not graft roux. Roux is some type of, of uh, uh, spices. Al gabei kida levana to white sasia mipnei shu yarak ba'ilan. So because the herb is uh, involved the grafting of herb to a tree. So it means that it's part of tree, not part of of herb. Amar of Papa, it's not a contradiction between the Mishnah and the Brayta. Kina lechud vekida levana lechud. In one, it's considering. Min yarak. One is considering some type of vegetable, and the other one is considering uh, some type of tree. Mishnah. Netano be migdal. If a person takes the eruvei tchumin and put it the uh, the eruv in a cupboard, and then he locked it. And all of a sudden, the key, he lost the key. So you cannot pull out the Eruv from that cupboard. So they said, It's considering an Eruv. Soon we explain why. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, Rabbi Eliezer disagreed and he said, If he does not know that the, key, um, that the key is in its place, it's not a valid Eruv. Now, before we go to the, the Gemara, what do we understand Rabbi Yezer? Look at exactly what he said. 
אם אינו יודע שהמפתח במקומו. If he is not sure what, he doesn't the know that the key is in its place. What does that mean? It means the key is probably lost. He doesn't know that it's where it's supposed it's to be. One possibility. Lost. What else? Well, I mean, he could have misplaced it and not know where he put it. I mean, Excellent. set it down somewhere where Excellent. it's not in its... Excellent. So we have here Rived, Rashba, and Ritva. Rived said, Im eino yodea, exactly the way David said. He's not sure. The Rashba said that this specifically if the key lost from its place. But if it's in his place, he's not sure where he left it. He hold even according to Abeliezer, it's a Eru. Now, Ritva said, since he will find it, he's there. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's, it's different. So, Ime no Yodea, it's really a fine line. What does that mean, no Yodea? The difference between misplaced and lost. Exactly. As, I assume you know, uh, there is a segula, some type of we talk today is the old site of Reb Chaim Vital. So one of those uh, beautiful, uh, some type of Kabbalistic segula is um, one who lost an item. She'll say, Amar Rabbi Binyamin, Rabbi Binyamin said, Hakol Bechezkat Sumim, everyone is in the category of, in a way, blindness. Ad Sheba Kadosh Baruch Hu Meir Et Anayim, until Hashem brightened the eyes. שנאמר, because it said in Bereshit about Hagar, ויפקח אלוקים את עיניה ותלך ותמלא את החמת. אז השם opens her eyes, she was thirsty, and suddenly she saw the well of the water. So this line, some rabbi said that a person should say three times, and it's a segula to find a lost item. That's a famous, you see it in the several um, uh, books. I saw it, for example, in the books uh, written by the late Rav Sharabi, he's one of the Kabbalistic uh, uh, Sephardic rabbi. Anyway, so he's in a state of loss, but he will find it. Where am I? So, if you tell me that the, we lost the key, why Tanakama, the first one, hold that it's a Eru? It's in a private domain intend to be in a private domain. But he cannot open the cupboard. What we said earlier, that if the person is in one domain and the Eruv is in the other domain, it's not considered. It's like two different domains, two different entities. So in that sense, Tosfot asks here, it makes no difference if he, he cannot do it because he's not allowed to do it, or he cannot do it because he physically cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Since he doesn't do it, he doesn't do it. So, um, it's a lot of Malach here in the Tosfot, and the um, the full explanation, I just want to give you a vignette of that, um, from the Mishnah Vrua, maybe uh, uh, from the Vilna Gaon, uh, this is uh, Mishnah Bura <coughs> in Orachaim Shin Yudale, 314. The Mechaber. He said, The prohibition against building and demolishing on Shabbat are not relevant with respect to utensils. However, this is only true of an action that is not actual building. For example, if a, a cast that does not hold 40 se'ah broke, and its fragments were stuck together with pitch. One may break it in order to take out its content, provided he does not have in mind to uh, perforate it with a good hole that can be served as opening for the cast. So, so you see here what uh, they, they explain here, uh, the Mishnah Brura and also the, the Vilna Gaon, um, we're dealing here with the acts are prohibited because of the prohibition against building or demolishing on Shabbat. But here it's basically it's like two entities. It's two different uh, a, um, a, um, domain. 
So the Gemara responds and said, Rabu Shmuel, the Amrit Ravayu, that both of them said, Hacha be Migdal Sheleveni Maskina. Here, we, we're speaking about what? A cupboard that's standing on what? It's called Levenim, which is a, a cupboard made of bricks. And in that case, the Rabbi Meir, he, it's according to Rabbi Meir, the Amar, Pochet Lechatchila Venoten. This is Gemara in Beitza, tracted Beya 31b. They said that we allow to demolish a bricks and if it's a it's a um, you can create a breach in a brick wall on Shabbat lechatchila and here you can do it for sure and and yontev and it's not part of the melechet soter that you do a, a, a demolishing that none here is an example bayit shemilu perot satum if you have a machsan, if you have a storage room that you fill it with perot, he were not talking about oranges because oranges can be um, 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 easily destroyed, le recavon, decay and not good. Talk about tvua, like grain, something that you put a large amount in a storage place. And it's closed, it's locked. And guess what happened? We're not talking about eruvet chumim, we're talking about perot, a fruit that you intend to eat on festival. So here what happened, all of a sudden, nifchat notel mimkom apchat. Boom! The wall kaput. For, uh, demolished. So, the, 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 the tells in the Mishnah that you can go ahead and take it. Notel mimkom apchat. It's not considering a set aside, it's not considering a mukze. So here we have Rashi that said velo mitzah mishum mukze vestama ke Rabbi Shimon. You remember we talk about the machlok in the Rabbi Shimon Tanakama, and Tosfot tells us something that it's ingenious. He said here what happened is that the, the wall demolished, so you can take out the, the the if it's for example part of the wall you can take the 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 uh, produce from that. He said. I'm reading two lines from the large man. Umiu Rashi tiretz bebeitza de adenotel mukom apchad lo choshiv mukze oil velo avi mukze la mishum pchita de avir rabanan de moke baavira de livne. Even according to Rabbi Yuda, who disagree with Rabbi Shimon, is not considering a mukze, because according to Rabbi Yuda, is rak midoraita is only biblical mukze mechamat isur that it's only mukze because of the prohibition and it's not lo mid rabanan. It's not rabbini. So if it's a small light thing, the varkal, it's not the issue. But again, I encourage you because we're running out of time. It's Rosh Chodesh and we have a long davening. I just want to give you a reference for those who are um, here or those who are watching us. Please go to Tafkuf Yudchet, Shulchan Aruch, Tafkuf Yudchet, Seif Yudchet. And there you see the Mechaber. He speak about Kotel Ra'uah, that the wall is not strong, it's weak. And you see there the Mishnah Brura, and very important to see the Be'ir Alacha. Brura Alacha go in a different direction in the Mishnah Brura. He bring the proof from the Rambam, and he said, Mukze Mechamat Isu, if it's a Mukze because of the prohibition, Be'guf Adavar in itself, sh- sh- that, that he can break part of, demolish part of the wall and he gets to the um, uh, produce and the whole issue that the Be'u Alacha involved here in the Vilna Gaon is the process to reach that produce. That's the big issue in Alacha. Again, it's uh, more than the, what we can do today. Rabbi Meir Omer pochet venote lechatchila. Rabbi Meir said even an in, issue, in even um, he said that it's nothing to do with demolishing in that wall that made out of brick because it's not attached in such a way. So he said, um, you can go ahead and do it uh, and pull out the fruit, the, whatever you have there. Here you have to say that you speak about the, that, uh, the structure built with layers of bricks that um, they have a, a, the cement space. And because they have s- space, 
and it's not attached. So again, we go back to our question. If you talk about cupboard, and the cupboard, he lost the key, so he is in one location, and the Eruv is in the other location. So why we say that it's considering an Eruv? ba'avira delivne. So you have to say here too, we are dealing with the cupboard made from layers of brick. He said that you're allowed to do it only in Yontiv, because in a festival, it's, it's something that we allow. But in Shabbat, even Rav Meir said that you're not allowed to demolish that bricks. So why you say that it's an Eru? You have to say, Hachana may be Yom Tov. You have to say that someone made the Eru for the purpose of festival. So therefore you're allowed to demolish the cupboard and pull out the Eru. And therefore, the Eru is considering an Eru. Remember we said many times there is a Migo. Migo meaning the same way that you are the Itkatsai Ben Hashmasho, that you are made it to set aside in a twilight time. Itkatsai Lekuliyama, it's also the Shabbat, it's a Mukse Iachei. So if you tell me that the Mishnah speaks about someone who prepared this Eru for the purpose of festival, Hainu Dektane Allah, that's what we learn in the Brayta, and the Mishnah Rabbi Yezer Omer, Im Ba'irava Deruvo Eruv. We ask a question, where exactly he lost? So he said, if it was in a city, so he need to go to those a, a roofs. So it's a, it's, a, it's a different story. But if it's in a field, so the field is Reshut Arabim, is a public domain. You cannot carry the keys. And a roof or a roof. It's not considering an roof. Mali ir, mali basadeh. You, anyway, you can go, because in Yontem, in a festival, you're allowed to carry even from Reshut Arabim to Reshut Ayachid, from pri- private to private domain for the purpose of the festival. So the Gemara said, 35, You see it many times in the Talmud. Something is missing. It's, uh, the Mishnah is incomplete and teach the following. If you place an Eruv in a cupboard, a locket, and the key is lost, because you're allowed to demolish the cupboard and pull out. This applies to a festival, but in the Shabbat you cannot do it. If you found the key on Shabbat, regardless if it's in a city or field, it's not considered a roof because you're not allowed to carry. In a, in a city, yes, but in a field, not. And here, Rashi said that there are three different disputations here, and Tosfot disagree with Rashi. I encourage you to read it. It's uh, not in our time. But he said in 89 he said makes no difference if it's a roof, courtyard, or enclosed field. Which means it's all considering one domain with regard to utensils that began the Shabbat in them. But in the field, the Eruv is not valid. That's what we said in Mishnah 95. The Mishnah said that, uh, uh, and I'm just giving you an abbreviation, if someone has uh, the issue of tefillin, need to carry, so, so you may think, okay, let's circumvent the system. What happened? You're allowed to carry in Rashut Arabim only four cubits, right? So you have now, let's say, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and Yehuda. Reuven carry in a four to his the end of four and give the tefillin to Shimon. Shimon carry a four and give it to Levi. Levi carry a four and do it to Yuda. So it's a discussion. And this way, and you circumvent the system. But aren't you allowed to just put the tefillin on and then wear them? Okay. So (laughs) it's a big discussion. We don't have the time here, but the whole idea is, in in short, what the rabbis tell us is that you cannot compare, you cannot juxtapose. Tefillin is the issue of kevod tefillin, the tremendous respect for the tefillin. And we don't want to leave the tefillin like outside in this respectful way. So we treat it in a little different manners. But in general, you cannot circumvent the system by having each person use his domain to, um, to carry. Practical halachot. Netano berosh hakaneh, shuchanu 4.9. If one place an air over the top of reed or growing plant 
it is not a valid error because it might come to break it off the plant. However, if the reed has been detached and later um, um, uh, um, stuck, in the stuck in the ground, so the error uh, it's considering a valid error. We also talk about reed, uh, box thorns, and, and others. So we said all of that. Uh, it's uh, some type of tree, and therefore um, uh, their presence in a vineyard does not constitute a violation of prohibition against food crop in a vineyard. And there is no difference between hard and soft plants in regard to this prohibition. Rather, the primary factor in that species as opposed to the softness or hardness of the plants. Um, and that's the Rambam. Hilchot Kilaim, chapter 5, the last halacha of today, Bait Shemilao Perot Venifchat. This is Shulchan Aruch Arachaim 518. If a house filled or a storage room with a produce um, uh, um, uh, with a, a breached and one is permitted to remove the produce via the opening, so the Magen Avraham said that apparently this is also applied to a bona field house. Uh, as produce itself was never set aside, it's never been a muktzeh. Uh, 